Hey, welcome everybody. Sports Book Review. Today is February 16th and it's Puckheads time. Uh, Canuck Carter is, as he puts it, what, what does he say, Dennis? What's he call that? Uh, he's on assignment. On assignment. All right, Dana, you heard it. I don't know where that assignment took him, but Canuck Carter, Codeine Carter, Caffeine Carter, whatever the hell they're calling him today, he is not with us. So we'll just give him a mulligan on that one and uh, we'll take for granted that he's on assignment. But one thing that cannot go unnoticed guys we're heating up the ice two and one for Dana Lane last show two and one for Scott Carter last show and Brenner I went one and oh so we had a very very productive five and two show Dana first and foremost always glad to have you on um, starting to pick up some steam and you especially have been leading the charge yeah well you know this time of year you know these teams start to separate themselves and if you follow this closely you can easily identify uh, teams that are, are teams to bet on and teams not to early in the season. We, we played a lot of plus money because, you know, we're trying to recognize the teams that the bookmakers are just not on yet, uh, but they've caught up. So now, you know, we're, we're getting on to minus 20s and minus 30s because that's just the right side to be on. Absolutely. And I like the way you say it is. This is when the cream rises to the top. You find out what teams are selling, what teams are, are you know, trying to build, you know, for the playoff push. So I think a lot gets revealed. And with that being said, I think it offers, uh, you know, us the advantage of giving our viewers the advantage to cash some NHL tickets. So with that being said, let's get right into it. Hit us with your first pick today, Dana. Uh, the first pick, Mike, we're going to go into the Philadelphia Flyers-Edmonton Oilers matchup. The total on this game is 5.5 to the under, shaded to the under, minus 34. And, and you know, the Flyers are going to lip into this trip or to this game against Edmonton, having scored just four goals uh, in their last five games, uh, including the 3-1 loss to Calgary. Uh, watch that game again last night. There's just nothing, there's no offensive cohesion uh, for the Flyers, and you know, so it, it to me, it, you're facing an Oilers team that might be hitting a little bit of a wall. So I do expect a little bit slower pace than what you might think you would get out of an Oilers game. Um, and that minus dollar uh, thirty four doesn't really scare us off. And in the uh, previous game, head coach Todd McClellan had uh, switched his lines, and no more Leon Dreisaitl and Connor McDavid, which have been together for a very long time this year. And, and that worked in the first in the first game. But one thing about change is you can always guarantee that there's going to be some inconsistency to follow the consistency. And I think we get that tonight. So I'm going to Flyers in Edmonton under five and a half minus a dollar thirty four for three units. Okay, three units. I like the breakdown. Um, but I've only got one pick, and, and after that breakdown, I'm thinking maybe I pull. But you know what? Sometimes <laughs> there's just those nights where, th where teams get it done. I'm actually pulling the trigger, Dana, on the Flyers at Edmonton because Good. I think Edmonton might just overlook this team. I think they also might have hit a wall, but I think the Flyers realize it's now or never. So no matter what the slump, no matter where this regression has come offensively, the bottom line, there was a time this year when this team sprung off nine or 10 in a row, which just doesn't happen too often. And it certainly doesn't happen on a fluke. So I think on the road is maybe a good spot for them to finally say, guys, it's time to crank it up. It is absolutely time. And if we're anything real of being a threat towards playoffs, we better show it tonight. So I'm absolutely going to take the shot. It's a big balls pick, but I'm taking the Flyers plus 145. I got it at bet 365. Um, you know, they're two points behind Toronto for the second wild card spot. That is ringing in their heads they have got to get this done and Edmonton obviously they're going to be ending a 10-year playoff drought but I like what you said Dana I think they may have hit a wall I think they relax tonight I think the Flyers step up I'm pulling the trigger on absolutely a big balls play but I feel like it's going to cash any thoughts on that yeah Mike and let's not overlook the fact that the expansion draft we think that it is so far away and it's not I mean, and Philadelphia is one of those teams that potentially could be targeted to take one of their unprotected goaltenders. Uh, Edmonton, you don't have to worry about that, but the Flyers, you do. So whether it's Neuver or, or it's Mason, uh, they could not. They could be one of the uh, players that the Golden Knights pick up. So you expect on a on on a nightly basis that you're going to get quality goaltending because both of those guys probably would like to. 
stay in, in Philadelphia with the unknown being Las Vegas. So I think you get a quality effort, at least from your goaltending, on a night-in, night-out basis. And, and that's a very, very big point, a good fact. And, and I hope Mason stays myself because I'm a Flyers fan. But, um, you know, that's when people, you know, the guys that have to step up, especially expansion, they know when they're going to be on, on stage. they got to perform. And a lot of gamblers, especially, doesn't matter what sport, they do not take in those factors. It's like NBA, trade, trade deadlines February 23rd. There's a lot of things that are going to be making the reasons the lines are zero. And you better stay attention, you know, pay, paying attention to those fine details because if not, we get blindsided and knocked out. And next thing you know, you're dropping units left and right. All right, again, I'm going Flyers plus 145. Dana, hit us with your next pick. The second pick we're going with is the Colorado Avalanche and the Buffalo Sabres. The, uh, the total on this game is at five. It's shaded to the over $1.35. And, and Robin Leonard, I mean, we, we've talked about this on our radio show almost every day about how we really like Robin Leonard. He's one of the better goaltenders and no, probably nobody knows about. Him. Unfortunately, his goals against average does not match his save percentage. And his save percentage, Mike, is, is amongst the best in the league. In fact, you know, I, I consider any goaltender that's over 92 percent to be one of the league's mm-hmm. elite, and he certainly is. But that goal, the goal, uh, goals against average of 2.55 is just way too high Ooh. for me. And it's not because of him; it's just they don't have defensemen in front of him. He faces a ton of shots on a nightly basis. Uh, offensively for the Sabers, Jack Eichel starting to heat up. Uh, Sam Reinhart has five points in his last five games. So I think what we're going to see here is a situation where it's going to be a 3-2 game. I think we'll get maybe an empty netter or a, uh, you know, a, when they pull the goaltender, they get a, a late goal to push that total over the over the five. Uh, but the Buffalo Sabres will, will do their part offensively. Uh, unfortunately, I also think that Robin Leonard will give up his usual two to three goals, but that's good enough to push it over the over. Um, so we'll take the over in this game over five minus a dollar thirty five minus a dollar thirty five. Yeah, and I agree also, Jake Eichel, he's starting to heat up and that makes a big, big difference as that squad goes. Dana, do you have any other picks for us? I only have the one today. Yeah, I, just one more pick. We have like Vancouver, St. Louis over five. That's minus a dollar nineteen. Um, you know, we you have a lot of injury problems on the Canucks. I mean, uh, Bo Horvat, uh, their leading scorer, and Brandon Sutter, who is their second uh, in time amongst uh, on time on ice, uh, did not play after being hurt sat Sunday against Buffalo. So we're kind of trying to figure out how that's going to affect uh, the the Canucks moving forward. And again, a lot of people think injuries mean unders. To me, injuries always mean overs. So with those two players being out or at least being questionable or less than 100%, that to me says over, and especially if you only have to lay a dollar nineteen. So uh, they're considered they're both considered day to day. Uh, it is not known whether or not they're going to play against St. Louis, but the the bottom line is that both of those players are not 100%, so that spells over for me. And also, uh, it, it, the Blues, you know, if you just blindly play them over at home, they're 12-4-6 and six, uh, in their last 22 home games. So that's a good enough trend for me to get on board, and, and five is not is, is a pretty easy number to get to, and uh, we're more than willing to do that for three units. Yeah, I'd, I'd be struggling to find anything to refute that for sure. I also am a big advocate of injuries means more goals, and especially this time of year. We're about two weeks removed from All-Star break. These guys are having to kick it into second gear right now. They know it's time. This is the push time, so I think overs would be the trend. I like the breakdown. Dana, before we leave our viewers, we're going to talk a little bit about NHL futures, where they stand now, you know, as far as East and the West and the stand Cup. So if you don't mind, let's start with the East. Obviously, Washington, big favored there. Um, Columbus Blue Jackets running second. You got Pittsburgh, and then behind that, Montreal. What's your thoughts on the East, and are these pretty accurate, and who might be a dark horse? Well, what's really interesting about this, Mike, is that we see all these coaching changes, and every single one of these coaching changes has led to an inspired effort. And, and, and one of the teams that's kind of lurked below the radar most of the year is the Boston Bruins. And I looked at their, uh, at, at their odds and are at 45 to 1 right now. They're 3 and 0 under their uh, uh, new coach, Bruce Cassidy. And this is a team 
that averages almost 35 shots on goal per night. The problem is, is the type of quality shots that they're getting is not enough to, uh, to get them more than five games over 500 or six games over. But you've seen in the last three games, there is certainly an inspired effort. Uh, they're getting to the puck a little bit, bit, bit more. Uh, Posternock is actually putting goals and pucks in the back of the net for the first time. I mean, he, he basically took a month off where we heard nothing from him. Uh, Bergeron and, and Marshan have started to step up up, the, up their game a lot. You know, let's not lose fact. Yes, I understand that the Bruins still have, you know, one goaltender, and they're going to they're gonna rely on Tuka Rask the rest of the way. There is nothing behind him. But there is still a championship core to that team. So if you are looking for a dark horse, and again, it's a long shot, but 45-1 to 1 is worth it to me. Uh, but if you're looking for a team that, you know, it's you know probably a definite that they're going to move. They're going to go at least far in the playoffs. You know, certainly the Pittsburgh Penguins at nine to one would also be uh, a team that I would look at. Yeah, and I looked at Pittsburgh also, and I like the I like the situation they're in now. Columbus, I don't know. I know they're very very good. They've they've taken leaps and bounds, but something tells me come playoff time, I got a feeling um, something's going to change there. I think their confidence level. I don't know if it's going to be as high. I may be wrong, but I got a feeling that I think Pittsburgh should overstep them. I wouldn't even be surprised if Montreal started to tighten up. I like your breakdown on Boston, though, because when we did our show last week, I had asked you about the coaching changes and things like that, and you specifically said Boston layoff. Watch him for three games. You said. And then you yeah. kind of have a direction. Now, you did say every coaching change, it's been uh, positive results, which is cool. But you specifically had broke down Boston. So with that being said, the fact, Dana, that they do have a championship core. It's there. All right. That is a dark horse that I have to respect. It wouldn't I, I would have no problem throwing a unit on that or sprinkling a couple hundred bucks on that because that return would be absolutely, um, you know, definitely profitable. But you're looking at a team that is now on fire under this new coach. All right. Thirty five five shots a game you're averaging all right they'll pick up the quality of the shots I look for that team to continue the steam yeah here's the thing about the Bruins too Mike yeah, obviously they they're still teetering on getting in or, or being left out of the playoffs if they get into the playoffs they are guaranteed to be on a roll and the reason I say mm -hmm. that is most teams have a, at least three games in hand on the Bruins so if they are able to get in, that means they're winning a bunch of hockey games. And a couple things that we know about hockey is the team that goes into the playoffs hot is usually the team that gets to the end. And we saw that the Pittsburgh Penguins last year uh, were not the number one team in the league. Obviously, the Washington Capitals were. Mm -hmm. But the Penguins rode that momentum uh, from the regular season straight through to the Stanley Cup. And, oh, by the way, they led the, they led, led the league in shots on goal last year as well. Wow. Um, and I also think that they led it in, in quality shots. So uh, I see a lot of similarities. Yes, they have problems on the blue line for sure. I'm not excited about Char and uh, – and, uh, I'm not excited about Char and most of the defensemen, uh, but I have for once seen an inspired effort out of Zdeno Char. Now he's just got to get his uh, his defenseman mate Brandon Carlo at that level as well. And and when we talk about Carlo, we talk about a rookie that's going to be into the playoffs for the first time. But uh, if they could shore up that defense and, and carry the puck, and that's what that's why shots on goal is so huge because there's a reason you have a lot of shots on goal. It's because you're carrying the puck. Mm -hmm. So if you have the puck most of the time, that means you're going to put yourself in a good position to win most of the night. They just got to play better defensively, and I think they'll be there at the end. You know, and, that, and that's a good breakdown, too, because I do I specifically remember last year Pittsburgh picking up steam because what it reminded me of last year was actually in any sport, when you get a team coming in hot like that, most teams are like, man, I don't want to be facing them, no matter what the seeding or whatever. It's like, that's a team we do not want to be facing right now, and I think that Boston can fit right into that that category if they keep this momentum rolling all right moving on to the west you got minnesota as a favorite uh chicago blackhawks followed by the sharks and then anaheim ducks any thoughts on that are these correct and is there a dark horse maybe in the west you think it could peek its ugly head out it's crazy in the west mike i mean it really is i mean you could see a team like nashville at 25 to 1 i could see edmonton getting uh, their second their, their second win at 22 to one, uh, even the Kings 
at 25 to 1. Uh, there's certainly a championship core there, or at least there's a championship culture. Uh, the one thing about the Nashville Predators, again, they put a bunch of shots on net. They're fifth in the league in shots on goal. Uh, but the other thing, too, is that I don't see out of the Bruins is there's a willingness to block shots. And I yeah. love teams that block shots because you, there may not be such an emphasis in the regular season, but once we get to the playoffs, that is a huge deal for, for any team to go forward. You show me a team that's going a long way in the playoffs, and I'll show you a team that gets down and tries to block as many shots as possible. Wow. Uh, the only thing with them offensively uh, – and. It's funny because, you know, they get a ton of shots on goal, but they're fifth in the league and misses on goal as well. So it, it's, you know, we put so much emphasis on the amount of shots that get to the goaltender, but they're also getting a lot of shots that are not getting to the goaltender. They're carrying the puck a lot, which, again, is the formula that the Pittsburgh Penguins used last year to to win hockey games. So uh, Nashville at 25 to 1 might be a shot. I've liked Edmonton a lot, although I still think that they're a year away. Um, they are extremely young, but extremely, uh, extremely exciting to watch. And, and they certainly have the, the, the potential to make a lot of noise in the playoffs. And let's not see, sleep on the offense uh, on the Los Angeles Kings, that if they could put together a solid defensive effort for a month, uh, they're going to be right there at the end as well. Because, you know, Peter Budai is is quite a surprise for them i mean jonathan quick should be back before the playoffs but peter budai has come in and, and done a great job for the kings i just i just i'm hesitant on the kings because i don't know that they can play that solid defense for that long and i think when quick comes back the chemistry is going to be a factor uh me personally because I, I was looking into la you know again there's a core in there that knows how to win but that's one i've Got to kind of step off of for a minute. But I do, you know, I like Chicago Blackhawks kind of knowing how to win it as well. And if they pick up some steam, especially offensively, on a more consistent basis and can stop that penalty, um, I think they might be one to, to be reckoned with as well. Now, moving on to the Stanley Cup, we'll just touch on this lightly. You got Washington, Minnesota, Chicago, and Pittsburgh, top four. Montreal hanging behind that with the Rangers and San Jose trailing behind them. Um, any thoughts real quick to wrap this up? on who you think may be a dark horse for the whole thing, or is there just a favorite that's absolutely worth the risk? Well, I think Pittsburgh's the safe one. Um, if if their penalty kill gets a little bit better, and again, you know, going back to Chicago, Mike, I mean, their special teams have been just uh, horrible all yep. season, which is not indicative of a Joel Quinville team, but uh, that's, what, that's what they've been all season. And uh, you just have to be good in all phases of the game to get to the cup, and I just don't know if they're good enough in that phase uh, to be able to to go, uh, uh, you know, to the Stanley Cup final. Certainly, they can win a, a round or two. Uh, they certainly have the core defensemen to do that. But as far as the Penguins are concerned, that's a safe bet. You're getting nine to one because we always get better NHL yep. odds than mostly any other sport. But their power play. Their ability to roll four lines out there and, and be effective with all four of those lines, that's a, that's a valuable trait to have. Uh, and if you have depth, you're going to go a very long way. So be the Penguins amongst that group. Okay, and again, for the viewers that don't dive in as deep but you want to profit in NHL, what Dana Lane just mentioned are some of the factors that are most important. You want to find a team that is four deep on their line, and their fourth line is not just, oh, we had to throw something together. It's quality, it's depth, and that makes all the difference. All right, viewers, you heard it. For the East, Dana Lane kind of leaning on a dark horse, Boston at 45-1, to and in the East, I mean, excuse me, the West Nashville sitting at 25 to 1. But when push comes to shove, comes down to the big Stanley Cup, who's going to hoist it? All right. And I have to agree. I think Pittsburgh might be there. 9 to 1 looking pretty good for the future odds. All right, Dana, thanks so much as always. Thank you for educating our viewers because I know this is your time of year when you start to shine. You did it last year, and already you're picking up steam. And as long as you and I can stay ahead of Canuck Carter, then we're doing something <laughs> right because, by God, he's not here to defend himself. Well, we could take the next three weeks off and, and be ahead, so that's... And that, we can, and guess how we can do it? I have it. You and I, we're going to be on assignment. That's how we can take the next three <laughs> weeks off. All right, viewers, have a great day. Cash those tickets with the Puckheads. Dana, I'll talk to you real soon. Have a great day. And, uh, guys, let's get it done. NHL stop. Go to SBRodds.com. Browse, compare, and shop live odds available at top online sportsbooks.